Welcome to the bold analysis. The current anti-bad governance protests that have been happening in the country started nearly a month after President Ruto held that uh, inaugural State House uh, White House visit to the United States of America. And for quite some time now, the Kenyans have been asking a pertinent question. And they've been saying that part of the bad policies that Kenya Kwanzaa have been imposing, the draconian policies, were authored by the Brittlewood institutions. The IMF and the World Bank were largely touted as the authors of the finance bill that triggered this protest. And after that, the state unleashed its ugly face on the population. And from there, things really take a tragic turn. Ladies and gentlemen, and of course, what we saw is violation of human rights. The reports about dead people unidentified the dead bodies that are still lying in the city mortuary unidentified is really some information that shocked this country. And the Kenyans were asking, where is the international community? The only international community that was here was in the international media. And probably we realized that they withdrew. They had really withdrew from partly these protests. And they only did coverage Kidogo, then left. But something very interesting happened now. The United States of America dispatched their envoy to Nairobi. I had analyzed that early, and I did an analysis on probably what could be their mission in the country. There have been series of meetings and they want us to look at what led to the other. It started here. When the president was in Nakuru the, some three weeks ago and complained that some Ford Foundation organizations were funding the protests in the country. We have no use for anarchy and violence and destruction of property and loss of life. Wale ambao wana sponsor hiyo violence. Sisi tunawajua. And I want to call out those who are behind the anarchy in Kenya. Those who are behind the sponsoring the chaos in the Republic of Kenya. Shame on them because they are sponsoring violence against our democratic nation. Mimi nataka niulize watu wa Ford Foundation watuambie hiyo pesa wanatoa, wanatoa ifanye fujo ndio wapate faida gani. We are going to call them out and we are going to tell them if they are not interested in democracy in Kenya, if they are going to sponsor violence, if they are going to sponsor anarchy, we are going to call them out and we are going to tell them they either style up or they leave. Tunaelewana jameni ama tuelewani? Munataka watu watu unulie vijana ati wafanye fujo katika Kenya? Vijana siyo wakufanya fujo. Vijana ni wakufanya kazi. Na hiyo ndiyo mpango tuko nae ya kupanga ajira ya wa vijana. Wakati tunapanga ajira ya wa vijana kwa affordable housing. Tunapanga ajira ya wa vijana kwa hii market. Tuna... After that, the Kenyan government sent letters, sent, wrote some letter to Ford Foundation, some shokos letter to demand accountability on the funding that they've been doing to civil societies organizations in the country. So just from indirectly, the presidency, the Kenya Kwanzaa administration was blaming the U.S. for the skirmishes that have been experienced in the country in the recent days. But then what followed was a letter from the U.S. Secretary of State, American Secretary of State, um, uh, State Department, Department of State, Anthony Blinken, who wrote a letter. 
and was demanding and was asking the President of the Republic of Kenya to respect the human rights, the youth, democracy, and the media rights, saying that those are some of the tenets of the U.S., uh, the United States of America. But after that, that still was not enough. They dispatched another envoy in the country. And that envoy who was dispatched here met William Ruto in State House. After the State House meeting, an audio has leaked, and I think he was addressing, I was in some exclusive audio, what she told the president. I, without much ado, I want us to take some minutes and listen to this story that was compiled by the citizen, because this is where the U.S. envoy is unleashing what they told the president. Let your actions match your words is the unerring message from the United States government to President William Ruto with respect to holding police accountable for the deaths and trampling of civil liberties in response to protests against his government. A message passed on phone by U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken less than two weeks ago and followed up in person by his Under Secretary for Civilian Security, Democracy and Human Rights, Uzrazea, that the police should protect and not terrorize the citizenry. And where they violate this principle, as has been witnessed during the protests, they should be answerable to the people for their actions. I encourage President Ruto to take concrete action on his recent public pledges to strengthen rule of law, champion anti-corruption initiatives, and advance accountability within his own government. I think the key question is the implementation of these commitments into action. And one specific area which I highlighted in my opening remarks is the importance of investigating reports of security force abuses, prosecuting uh, those found to be responsible and ensuring that accountability is achieved. They are making these remarks after meeting with various security sector players, among them the Independent Policing Oversight Authority, which has accused the Office of the Inspector General of Police of sabotaging its efforts to investigate the killing of protesters by the police. And as for whether there will be consequences should the U.S. government's call for the respect of human rights go unheeded. I would underscore to you, it's, it's well known that U.S. Uh, security assistance, partnership cooperation programs are also uh, subject to U.S. law that requires that we are vigilant, you know, with respect to um, our partners upholding human rights. And where there are allegations of gross violations of human rights, we have to be attentive and, um, and call for accountability. The undersecretary denying that the U.S. government has turned a blind eye to these violations after it bestowed a great honor of a state visit on President William Ruto two and a half months ago. And just I have seen that throughout the protests, the United States led by our embassy, but supported by my boss, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, we've urged the government of Kenya to conduct prompt, transparent investigations into allegations of violence and hold those responsible accountable. In the course of her two-day visit to the country, Zaya passed on the same message to the Principal Secretary Interior, Raymond Omolo, and the Director of Criminal Investigations, Amin Mohamed. She also met with other players in the justice system, including Chief Justice Martha Kome and the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission. We are going to continue to concentrate our efforts and support strengthening Kenyan government investigative um, uh, prosecutorial and asset recovery capabilities to take the ill-gotten gains of kleptocratic actors and return them to the people. From that, they're demanding, they're telling the president that respect human rights, respect the Kenyan youth, and the police who violated the rights of the population must be brought to book. There is something why they are really demanding that. Because I know many of us 
have been looking at the skirmishes in the country. These skirmishes have taken, have been, you know, they've been having that global attention. They've been getting that global attention. But the reports on violations is also denting the image of our police force that is really running some missions across the world. So we'll get to understand deep in that. There is something is also saying that the American cooperation deals with Kenya are also at risk if the situation continue. There is something that is with the US that before they give you, they normally demand. Unlike other countries that don't have conditional loans and that give that doesn't have conditions, America have a condition on democracy. As to whether they mean it or not is another thing because their demand for democracy and you know fight against corruption in those countries sometimes they bring it but they still use their imaginations to even uh, manipulate elections in their side. And so from that voice of the American envoy there is something, there is a tone he's speaking there. Indirectly, he's telling the president. When you hear William Ruto talking, and allow me to play for you this video, this was in Meru today. Kenya ni inchi ya demokrasia. Kenya ni inchi ya amani. Kenya ni inchi ya kufuata sheria. We are a proudly democratic country based on the firm foundation of the rule of law. There is no room for anarchy, chaos, and violence. We are a country that believes in peace, that believes in the rule of law, and everybody's right is protected under the rule of law and under our constitution. Tunaelewana jameni? Hatutaki vita katika taifa letu la Kenya. Hatutaki fujo ya kuaribu mali ya watu, kulete maafa Kenya, kuizi ya mali ya wengine, tunasema hatutaki waribifu katika Kenya. Sisi ni inchi ambayo tunaendesha mambo yetu chini ya sheria na kwa njia ya demokrasia. Viongozi wananchi ndio wanaamua. Ama inaamuliwa wapi? Si nyinyi ndio msema kweli? Si nyinyi ndio mnajua MCA vile anachakuliwa? Na wabunge, na rais, na kila mtu. Nyinyi mmeshindwa kuchagua? Si mnajua vile ya kupanga hii watu? Si sisi wote tuko kiwanjani? Si kila mtu anafanya kazi ila anajua? Si baada ya hiyo mko na mtiani? Simojakuta kwa zaisha ile mtu amezembea kazini si anafukuzwa ama na gani naona mzee mwingine huko anasema atembee nyumbani ile mtu hajafanya kazi <laughs> when you hear the president talking the president talks about i will protect the country i will take pro people's property and i will protect this and that but he never talks about i will protect life the second thing the president speaks about anarchy that the people that are coming out in the streets are just anarchists. From that, from the tone of the U.S., they are not buying the narrative that those young children and Kenyans who are on the street are actually people who are just anarchists. They're saying it is their democratic right to protest because it is in the Constitution, and of course it is in the Constitution. So what the U.S. is saying and what the president and the handlers have been saying is a totally different thing. What they've been pursuing, William Ruth has always tried to project the movement in the country as one that is just there to remove him from power and is just trying to use unconstitutional means while the power of the people is also there. So I want to explain in detail why the U.S. is differing with Kenya Kwanza administration. What ordinarily would maybe we expect, and you see they wrote a letter and now they sent that envoy to the country. And from there, he came, she came out and said what she's told the president. Interestingly, that is normally, that is not normally very familiar. They normally don't do that. Rarely will you see, will you find these envoys even discussing or rather re, uh, and, and, uh, leaking out 
what they've discussed with the president. So this is one of its kind. And I'm very sure they wanted that information to go out. That us as America, we stand with the Gen Z and I have denounced this and this and this. In fact, the justice system that is supposed to give justice to the victims of police brutality has been compromised. And he even met some IPOA and some security forces. This meeting is on Tuesday, on Wednesdays. This statement is coming on Wednesday and the protests nani nani, are slated for Thursday. So that, this Thursday, they will be in the country. <laughs> they will be in the country. And so the U.S. will be waiting to see how the police, you know, they will be here. They'll be seeing those things here. How, and they're waiting to see how President William Ruto is going to manage. In fact, William Ruto is in a very tight spot. The envoy who said that don't kill protesters and bring the police who killed protesters to book is in the country the day the country is also facing another protest. And maybe that is why I have seen a different, a shift Kidogo and a very, a very shocking one. I've seen videos of police officers thronging to some police stations, not police officers, some border border guys getting to police stations and probably they are being, you know, trained. Or they're getting some, some, I don't know, being equipped or, or some instructions on how they will protest against the Nani Nani protests. Who knows about tomorrow? There is something that U.S. knows that there is power in the numbers. They saw what happened in Bangladesh. So they are keeping their eye on what will happen in the country. But I want to interpret this statement or this breakaway statement from the U.S. America got to have some cooperation deals with Kenya. Some of which, after Kenya was designated as non-NATO U.S. ally, includes um, supply of uh, arms and ammunition as one of the things that U.S. is supposed to do to the country. Just on that non-NATO U.S. ally, they're also supposed to establish a military base here in Kenya. They're also supposed to give Kenya some choppers and armored vehicles that are supposed to be used on security operations. And America understands well that probably this should be used for fighting enemy but not fighting the people. So this, there is this one. The other thing you can see is these deals of even the dual, the, the, the dueling Mombasa Nairobi Highway and many others. So they are pushing accountability because from what they are seeing, the public rage is on accountability. But the president is acting dumb of the accountability questions and is then branding two things, branding the protest anarchists and also profiling some leaders, especially some, some leaders from Mount Kenya, as faces behind it. So if U.S. is putting that voice, does it mean then U.S. is working with those leaders being profiled? So America is pushing accountability because of the deals they've had, because they've known very well that probably this is one of the problems. And, and, and I can see that the international community is not convinced to with the steps Ruto has taken. If the envoys are to meet Ruto and ask Ruto, since the Gen Z protest started a month ago, what have you done? He will say, number one, I have brought Raila in government. They will ask, how does that stop corruption? How does that stop corruption? Number will say, I have dissolved the parliament. I have dissolved the cabinet. 
and formed it again. They will ask, why did you bring some people in cabinet who have corruption cases? Some people that are already in the blacklist, even the previous administration. You will be asked. The tough questions. So, and, 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 and what has really been seen? I know there can be some policy relaxed, the return of Linda Mama, some dividends of those protests. We've seen the return of Linda Mama. Um, I don't know which other policy, you know, quite not a many, but, but you can see the, the, the issue of accountability is here. So the international community does, is not also convinced that enough that Tutu is saying is done, that Kenya Kwanzaa have done, is really geared towards the issues of accountability. Number three. I think the president and Kenya Kwanzaa were interested in deplatforming and killing the opposition. And by the stroke of a pen, Raila is just staying in denial, but it has been part and parcel of killing the Kenyan opposition. So there is no any other opposition that can put Ruto to check apart from what the Kenyans are doing in form of protests. We cannot change about it. The U.S. are not leaving, are leaving no stone unturned. Number three, I think, I see a diplomatic teardown between Kenya and the U.S. because of the flip-flopping. Recently, there was a story, I think I analyzed it here. There is that data center that is supposed to be established in Kenya. And the U.S. is supposed to cooperate with some firm from Dubai, United Arab Emirates, and what's happening in, in the thing, in, in the U.S., United Arab Emirates. And they're supposed to be published in Kenya. But the U.S. said that Dubai must break its ties with China. Otherwise, their security, you know, their, secret, their secrets are not secure. When they're working with Dubai farm, and that Dubai farm is close to China. In fact, the U.S. has always demanded that Kenya works close to the West and drops China and Russia, the East. So this could be also playing part here. And that deal is at the brink of collapsing. But I can tell you, apart from being de designated a non-NATO U.S. ally, not so much from the U.S. trip has been realized. And probably much is going down the brain. Lastly, the Kenya police image has to be protected because of Haiti mission. There is no way there can be violations by the police force here. And you want the UN member states to contribute and support the Haiti mission fully. And also, even to get goodwill, even the police in Haiti to get goodwill. So I'm paying more attention to look at how the Sunday, how the Nani Nani protest will run. Of course, looking at this leaked audio from the U.S. envoy in Kenya. Thank you.